Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 6. This is another good episode. Let's get started. And please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. So many people watch and don't subscribe, so make this girl's day. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Uh, so here are the self-portraits that the artist did in order to be accepted onto the program. And we know from watching this program that everybody is capable of completing the task that they're going to do today, which is that they're given four hours to paint a celebrity model. And I think this is an exciting field. I think the program just keeps getting better and better and better. We know that so many people enter this competition and, you know, they only have, they only have so many slots per year. And I'm doing interviews with many of the people who I've seen on the program that I'm intrigued by because I want to hear more about them. And so you can see that on my channel as well. So here are some potential future interviews to come, but who knows, who knows where this is going, but um, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And it appears that many of you are having a lot of fun with it too. So we have, of course, a great variety of styles and not a great variety of media. It looks for the most part that people are either painting in acrylic or oil. As usual, we do not have a watercolorist. Occasionally we have a pastel artist, but uh, I don't, as far as I can tell, that's not happening today. Now I do say, for people who've watched before, I do watch the program with the sound off. Not that I haven't, this is, I've seen the program in the past, but I find listening to the judges becomes um, difficult for me. So I want to make up my own opinions about the art. That's what I'm here for, the art, not, not really the, uh, the, the personalities. Our first model up is Maggie Adderin. She is a space scientist. Boy, that surprised me. We have so many actors and actresses. So this is, this is uh, I, I'm not familiar with her, but this, this is going to be fun. I love the, what she decided to wear today, and I'm sure a lot of thought and consideration goes into that as well. So three of the artists spend four hours and paint uh, Maggie, and at some point, and after that, the artists turn their easels around and she gets her first look, and she's gonna pick one to go home, which is an honor. It doesn't affect the final judging of the program. Only one of these people will go through to be in the semifinals. Well, that looks great to me. I mean, you only have four hours. You only have four hours. You have people interrupting you for interviews. You have, I don't think this was done during COVID. I think the year before was COVID where there wasn't a crowd behind you. Although um, it's a little hard to tell from the program, but that looks, it certainly looks like her. Oh, wow. Look at that. Wow. That looks great. Wow. Boy, it's just incredible to me that people are are able to do this under really difficult circumstances. Yeah, that's a nice job and very complete. You know, sometimes they can only focus on the face because, you, you know, four hours is a very limited amount of time. So that's a strong contender. Let's see the next one. The next one up is more of a black and white kind of an image um, and done in a circle. We've seen that device used before. I'm not opposed to it in any way. Certainly, again, looks like her. It's so much fun to see how each one of these portraits looks like her and yet are very, very different, which is, which is why we have art, you know, instead of uh, just straight on photography. But it is important to have a resemblance because that's why you're hired as a portrait painter. Your client certainly wants to have a resemblance in the final image, so, so that's pretty darn important. Oh yeah, I remember her self-portrait. It was, it was a little odd, hmm. Maybe we'll see more about her later. I don't know. Uh, what I'm looking for is a consistency of style. And, you know, and they're looking for, you know, can the person get the uh, final commission done? The final commission is a $10,000 commission of a celebrity that's going to hang in a museum. Here's another one. Very nice. Um, yeah, this person really concentrated on the face, which 
quite frankly, if I was on the program, I think I would need to do, oh no, we're going to pull back. They, they did do more of that. It's amazing how much they got done in this time, but maybe because I'm a watercolorist, I don't really understand that. I use a hair dryer to get my paint to dry in between layers. That may not be such a factor. I, I, I don't know technically. Oh, I love the red going on in the hair and those blue highlights. I, as, I, love, I love cerulean blue put in places that tend to be dark. It gives it a certain um, excitement, especially if it's near a tone which is orange. Oh, look at that. Wow, that is great. Oh, boy. She's got three great paintings to choose from, and the judges have three great artists to choose from. This is just going to be... Uh, somebody's going to be disappointed. Um, clearly, I'm going to be disappointed because I want all three to go through, but we know that's not going to happen. So let's see which one Maggie picks to go home with her. And she picks... Um, she, you know, any one of them would have been really lovely in your home. Yeah, there's her pick. Wow. Yeah, really nice. Good job. All right, our next model up is David Alusaga. And he is a British historian and writer. So I'm not familiar with him. Wow, they're getting academic in this episode as opposed to going for the, you know, the beautiful symmetrical faces of the actors and the actresses that we usually see. All right, great. I love it when my when my client has some glasses on that. Uh, I can't help it. It, it just helps me. <laughs> but, but that's an aside. So four hours in, the artists turn their easels around. We get our first look as to David about the one he's going to take home today. Oh boy, this looks like a strong field too. Wow, this is going to be such a difficult episode for the judges to deal with. I really... Oh, I know it's a competition. When am I ever going to let it go? Here we are on season eight, and I'm still not letting it go because I want everybody to win. All right, here's the first one up. This is very much uh, a drawing as well as a painting. I think this person's going to be judged on what they were able to do and accomplish today, not what they weren't able to do, because you clearly see he's mapped out, or this person has mapped out where they're going to go. I, I just think there's a real subtle beauty to this. Wow, look at that. Just enough information and also not too much. That's that's a fine job. Um, if I was David, I would I would be very happy with this painting. I would even like this painting unfinished. Look at that. Wow, that's so sensitively done. And once again, it looks like the face is emerging from the canvas as opposed to being stamped onto it. And I, I, I that's important when you're building up your layers. Here's another one, very different, but yes, it does resemble him. Much more use of color than the last one, um, and obviously using bigger brushes to fill in masses and forms. So this speaks to me a little bit more as a painter than maybe the first one did, which was beautiful draftsmanship. But but um, but that is getting so nitpicky, it's ridiculous. So this one looks looks really, really good to me. There's also some blue thrown in there. Um, not an exciting colorist, which you don't have to be. It just tends to be something that I like. Yeah, look at that from far away. Now, from far away, you see, that's going to carry the day in a gallery. Because in a gallery setting, a gallery setting is not your home. A gallery setting is very big. If you've ever put on an art show of your work. A big painting in my house looks big in my house, and when I take it to the gallery, oh my gosh, it's like the incredible shrinking woman. It just sort of disappears because the walls are so big. All right, here's the next one. This is kind of an amalgam of the last two that we saw. More color than our first person, and also um, subtlety going on, and, um, and a spareness. All of them resemble our sitter, so he's got he also has three strong paintings to choose from. I don't know what he's going to pick, and I don't know what the judges are going to do. Now we get a little bit more of a close-up here. That's really, really carefully done. If I squint my eyes, yeah, the important information is really there, but not too much information. You know, I don't want to see eyelashes, because that's not the way we actually see faces. You know, we see we see forms. Oh, I remember her self-portrait. <gasps> oh, I'm a fan of hers. Wow, it reads better from far away than it did um, from those pictures I had before. There's more of a value range. That's a strong piece. Oh, boy, I'm a fan. I, mm, boy. Um, for whatever reasons, this one really speaks to me, so that's one I would choose. But let's see which one they pick. Um, so let's see which one David picks. 
and he picks, uh, let's see, oh, he picks a very quiet one. Well, nicely done. That will look beautiful in his home, and I think it shows a certain amount of thoughtfulness, and he is a British historian and writer, as opposed to being a, celeb a celebrity as we know a celebrity in terms of being thirsty and wanting their faces on Instagram and stuff. So now we go on to the next model. Our last model of the day is Sergei Poplinen. No, Polinen. Polinen. He is a ballet dancer. Oh, he's a, he's he's quite beautiful. <laughs> so um, I could not get a screenshot of him from the program. Sometimes the program is persnickety about letting you take screenshots, and sometimes it 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 lets you. But for some reason, it wouldn't let me get a screenshot of him. So I had to go to the internet which allowed me to see more of him, you know, his, his ballet dancing and, and more images of him. But that's very much what he looked like on the day. So our first portrait uh, person, as we turn the easels around, is this one. I don't think this looks like him at all. Um, it's a fine painting, but it doesn't have a resemblance to him. Now that doesn't seem to be a factor on this program for the most part. Sometimes they bring it up and sometimes they don't care at all. But um, yeah, from far away, it reads really, really well. I just, uh, the only thing I'm hung up on is I'm not just, just not sure it has a resemblance to him. You know, that can happen. Sometimes you just nail it and get it correct, and sometimes you don't. But here's the next one up. This looks a little bit more like him, certainly looks more like him. Um, wow. You know, it almost looks like it was a, a, a painting, like a poster kind of painting. I, I don't know if you know what I mean like a mural of some kind. And that's just because it has a lot of blending in it. So that's interesting to me. It doesn't happen to be something that I like. I mean, I don't not like it. It's just not something that I strive for in my work. I, I, like, I like a painting to um, kind of show its individual parts. Close up, yeah. There's, it's, um, this is one that just looks a little bit more like it's not emerging from the canvas for me, as opposed to some that we've seen before. Oh, okay. So here's one where someone has done color value swap outs. So instead of using the colors that they see with their eyes, they have used the exact same, you know, they, they're looking at the shapes. This is what I do, but I don't do color swap out to this extent. But this is a good example of it, where you identify your different uh, value changes and you apply a color to them and if you do that successfully you will have created a three-dimensional form and that's what's happened here it's extreme because we all know a face doesn't really look like that when you pull away from it it looks it, it looks great right now what many painters try to do and what I try to do is this exact same thing but on a subtler scale so that it, you um, you only see those colors if you come in really close and when you go away they sort of uh, meld together but he he has done this more fractured kind of thing going on which I find exciting I don't know if the judges will find it exciting I never know hashtag Joe is always wrong I never get the picks right Sergey Polinen's pick is going to be oh wow look at this Oh, he picked this one. Yay. What a thrill and what an honor as well. So good for him. Uh, that's that's going to look terrific. So now we get to the judging. Now the judging happens and only three people are selected to go forward for the semifinals of this episode and only one will go forward from that. So here they are, all of the participants from today. Remember there were nine of them and um, they're exhausted. They've they haven't been able to tell friends and family that they're doing this program. They have to travel to London. You have to stay someplace probably overnight. You got to bring your materials. You're under hot television lights and the pressure of interviews. Oh, the whole thing would just, just completely destroy me. So the fact that people can even walk and talk at the same time is amazing to me. So here's our first finalist. Yeah, I remembered that her first that her self portrait was. I, I mean, I don't know how to say it. It's just odd and her portrait for today. Um, boy, I think they're gonna go for this because they are always saying that they want to have different voices. And, you know, that's why we watch this as an entertainment as well. We don't wanna see the same good painting, good painting, good painting, sort of in the same style. So uh, I have a feeling they're gonna pick this one, but I'm, I'm usually wrong, who knows. Oh, I'm very surprised at this one won. Well, I can see why. His self-portrait is so very strong and he just, you know, he just didn't hit those um, 
he just didn't hit it today. So uh, knowing how programs work and, and, and whatnot in real life, they probably have seen his portfolio and know he's very capable. So I think they're judging him. Maybe not on exactly what he did today, but his body of work. And that, that's how it should be. Oh, look at this. Wow. Wow. That's very interesting. Okay, so this person does kind of experiment with um, having things appear and having things disappear. I, I kind of like the imagery of that. It's a little bit ghostly and a little bit dreamy. Ooh, I, I would like to see more from this person. But I am not a judge. And so let's see what they do. So the final judging begins. And so now we have the three finalists and we get to see which one will go on as the winner. And this will, um, you know, this is good for everybody. It's good for everybody on the program. It's good for everybody who becomes a finalist. This is a real boost to your career, your confidence, as well as your, your you know, people seeing who you are. It's, there's, there's tons of great painters. Um, so, you know, how do you get, how do you get noticed? This is, this is a good venue for that. So the winner is, dun, 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 dun. Well, to my surprise, the winner is this one. Hmm. I think I might have called this one. If so, that would be the first time ever. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint sweat, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.